Ladies and gentlemen, Mercedes Viana Schlapp, co-founder of Cove Strategies. Our country craves leadership. The Obama administration reminds us of the ugly side of liberal, authoritarian ideology and raw political power. That's not leadership. That's a punishment. It is my honor to introduce a true leader. She has led in the private sector. She leads in the charitable world. She is leading in the debate of ideas. She bravely took on liberal Barbara Boxer in California. That's right. She ran against a liberal woman in the most liberal state in the country. Wouldn't it be interesting if she took on another liberal woman in 2016? It is my honor to introduce the chairman of the American Conservative Union Foundation, Carly Fiorina. You know what makes me mad? Liberals who say we don't care. Aren't we sick? Aren't we really sick and tired of hearing that conservatives are waging a war on women, or we don't care about the poor, or we're all about the 1%, or we don't care about the little guy? In truth, it is liberals who are willing to sacrifice other people's lives and livelihoods at the altar of their ideology. You want a few examples? You've all heard about the terrible drought unfolding in California. It is real, but the disaster there is completely caused by failed liberal ideology. California's population has doubled in the last 40 years, but liberal environmentalists and their liberal political allies have refused to allow a single new water reservoir or water conveyance system to be built in those same 40 years. And the result of that, 70% of the rainwater, the rainfall each and every year washes out to sea. And to make matters worse, the decisions about how to use this very limited, precious resource of water that Californians have, those aren't made by Californians. Every single one of them is made in Washington, DC. Each year, people are told, you get 10% of your ration. You get 20% of your ration. You get 30% of your ration. What's the result? The most productive farmland in the world lies fallow and lives and livelihoods are being destroyed. Apparently to liberals, fish are more important than families and food. Liberals do not trust that farmers are good stewards of the land. They don't believe that Californians can make sensible decisions for themselves. Their answer, their solution, send President Obama out with a check to provide relief but don't let anyone solve the problem. You want another example? Liberals tell us that global warming is the challenge of our time. Of course, it's been so cold lately, they've now changed it to climate change. But to support the job-killing regulations that are spewing out of the EPA, they cite scientific evidence, but they never finish that story. Those same scientists who are trying to convince us that global warming is real also tell us that a single nation acting alone can have no impact at all. Never mind, say the liberals. Let's wage a war on coal and fossil fuels anyway. Never mind, say the liberals. Let's stop all major energy infrastructure projects, including the XL pipeline. I have visited coal country many times. I have met hard-working, proud people whose families have worked in the coal mines for generations. Their lives, their livelihoods, their communities, their aspirations are being sacrificed at the altar of liberal ideology. 
Let us talk. Let us talk about income inequality. Who has made it worse? Liberals want to protect us from banks that are too big to fail by passing thousands of pages of legislation and regulation. The result? Ten banks that are too big to fail have become five much bigger banks that are too big to fail with record bonuses being paid all around. And at the same time, community banks are struggling. The truth is that big business and big labor have more influence in Washington, D.C. today than ever before. And at the same time, more small businesses are failing than at any time in the last 40 years. Perhaps liberals are talking so much about income inequality right now because they hope you won't notice how much worse they have made it. And the poor, one in six people in America live in poverty today. The liberals' answer? Market food stamps. Attack charter schools. Have you watched the protests against Mayor Dil Bill de Blasio, who has a crusade against charter schools right now? Have you seen those protesters, most of them are African American and Hispanic families in disadvantaged communities who just want their kids to have a chance. And the dirty little secret about a minimum wage hike, it may help the people who already have a job, but it hurts the people who don't have jobs, and it hurts the people who are looking for an entry-level job and the chance to work their way up. And one last example. I am a proud pro-life woman. Like so many other young women, like so many other young women who are pro-life today, I believe science is proving us right every day. I am prepared, I am prepared to accept and respect that not all women agree with me. I know how lonely a woman can feel when she faces a terrible decision. What we are not prepared to accept is that we are waging a war on women simply because we know that an abortion at five months is inhumane to mother and child. We are not. We are not waging a war on women simply because we believe there is no reason for birth control to be free. We respect all women. And we do not insult them by thinking that all they care about is reproductive rights. All issues are women's issues. We are half of this great nation. Women balance the checkbooks. That's why women care that we can't balance the checkbook in Washington, D.C. Women, women make the health care and the education decisions for our families. Women worry about our own jobs, our children's jobs, and our husbands' jobs. We are conservatives. Our empathy, our empathy, causes us to recognize that any one of us can fall upon tough times. We know that any one of us at any time can need a helping hand and a second chance. And so we give generously to those in need. Ask the poor what they really need. Ask especially those single moms struggling to make it through one more day. Here's what they will tell you. They need our help. And while we know that God gave each of them dignity and self-respect, they need those things from us too. 
and they need and deserve a job. We have profound respect for the capabilities and the potential of every human life. The poor do not lack ambition or intelligence or potential. They are poor because they lack tools and opportunities. When a person, when any person, has the tools, the training, the education to tap their potential, the opportunities to unlock their potential, and the liberty to pursue their own dreams in their own way, then they and our nation prosper. It is liberals, it is liberals who display a callous disregard for the dignity and the potential of others. It is liberals who are prepared to sacrifice the livelihood of others at the altar of their ideology. It is liberals who believe that some know better than others what is good for you. We here at CPAC know that everyone deserves an equal opportunity to fulfill their potential. We know that everyone has the capability to build a good life. We believe the highest calling of leadership and of our nation is to unlock the potential in others so that they can live the very best life they can. All of my life, people have asked me what I believe leadership is all about. Some people think leadership is about position, title, power. Leadership is not about any of these things. Leadership is about unlocking potential in others. Leadership is about changing the order of things. It is time to change the order of things. We declare the end of the Obama era. Let us together lead our nation to fulfill our potential. Let us rise together to meet our destiny and be the nation we know we must be. Thank you and may God continue to bless America. Thank you very much.